Welcome back to The Pulse. My name is Daniel Dazi. We are discussing the 2020 budget, which was just presented on the floor of Parliament by Ken Oforiata, Finance Minister. Our guest in the studio is Seth Tech, the former Finance Minister, and he has been giving us his thoughts on some elements of the budget presentation that was done. We'll pick a few more highlights, but let me take some of your messages. Um, please, for your information, Mr. Host, parents are spending in this free SHS more than before because parents bear the cost of extra classes, short duration of students in school. Makes parents spend a lot when they are on vacation. This is coming from Nelson in the um, Upper East region. We are not interested in the big economic jargons the Minister of Finance is bothering us with. With Let it be noted then that the ordinary Ghanaian does not feel its impact of their so-called economic stability. They have amassed enough wealth for themselves and their families, so they, can they think it's the same for the ordinary Ghanaian. Um, Right. I just want to take. Um, I just want to take one more message, then we move on. Good afternoon to you. I want to use this opportunity to advise Honorable Sir Tekpe that Ghanaians have passed through sweet talk. NDC has done has nothing better to offer Ghanaians. They were tested for more than seven years. The value is the same. They should sit and allow the NPP to continue changing what they destroyed. Right. 0540 That's the number on the bottom of your screen. You can send in your message and contribute to the program. We want to make it as um, interactive as possible. If you have a question as well, please uh, let us know the question. We'll definitely put it to Mr. Tepe. We'll be joined by government very shortly on the program. Uh, I understand <laughs> the... Chairman of the Finance Committee of Parliament, Mark Esibeyabwa, will be joining us. Dr. Mark Esibeyabwa will be joining us. But in the meantime, let's look at some key highlights of today's budget presentation so that we use that to shape the discussion. The Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, um, highlighted some sectors of the economy which have improved um, and they will be focusing on going into the next fiscal year. So uh, you just see there on your screen that governments will take radical policy and institutional reforms towards raising tax to GDP ratio over the medium term from under 13% currently to around 20%. Basically, we'll be trying to use radical policies to raise more taxes. And um, we'll be asking Mr. Tekpe what he thinks about that. We'll take a couple more. He says that there will be a three-year reform initiative coordinated by the Ministry of Trade and Industry to make Ghana one of the most transparently and efficiently regulated business environments in Africa. So business regulatory reforms are coming up and there will be higher amounts of external private capital to complement government's resources in driving our transformation. Um, and in doing that, we'll go for foreign direct investment. Let's take a breather on this and come back to studio. Uh, to speak with Mr. Tekpe. So, Mr. Tekpe, 13% tax to GDP ratio, which means that for the entire Ghana, about we are able to raise 13% of our size as a nation in taxes. Similar economies like Kenya are doing 20%, which is why I'm sure Mr. Ofoyata has said that as a target. Is that attainable in your view? I'm not sure Kenya is doing 20%, so I stand for correction. Uh, the sub Saharan Africa average. And t Kenya is certainly at the top end, um, together with uh, Ghana, used to be there, and other Cote d'Ivoire and others, is between actually 15 and 17.5 percent. Mm. Some do 18. Mm. We are talking about tax revenue. If you talk mm. about um, if you talk about total revenue, mm. you know Ghana is even in, in, in this document, the media review. Uh, when you talk about total revenue, Ghana is doing 20 percent, and it's it went down to. Maybe, uh, yeah, it went down to 15 percent. Mm. We were, yes. Um, so but that's you not know, 17.5 percent. And, um, no, but the other point is, uh, okay, so actually, it's um, in 2016, it was 18.1 percent, and the average of 21 African countries was 18.2 percent. That was in, um, according to the OECD, yeah, Kenya right. in <clears throat> 2016, and Ghana was, yes. At, no, Ghana, Ghana at the time for, from the OECD ranking, I'd have to open that, but from what Mr. Foriata is, is telling us, um, Ghana at the moment is performing around 13. Yeah, but we just read this. You mm. see, when, when you read this and economy, you see, don't take only the, 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 the positives. 
when you rebase your economy, your expenditure to GDP ratio goes down, right? Your debt to GDP ratio goes down. Yeah. And therefore, your tax to GDP ratio will also go down mm. before it rebounds. Mm. Right. Mm. And so when we did the first rebasing back in 2010, the ratio fell to, I believe, around 12%. Mm. Yes, I think 11.5%, 12%. And then, you know, but the realization is that, wait a minute, so it means that there are sectors, because when you rebase, you are looking at sectors. And services normally is the one that keeps increasing. And then petroleum would also be increasing. Mm. Petroleum output, petroleum and its allied in, you know, uh, rare sector activity, okay. not just exports, petroleum services and others. So they are, that basket would also have to be expanded. Okay, so then the rebasing itself should tell GRA that the sectors that have been added were probably not, you know, in the tax sector sufficiently enough, which is why the, the ratio dropped. And so we just did a rebasing. I'm not excusing GRA, but I'm saying that we should expect some drop before it goes up. We should be taking into account when doing your expenditure projections. You don't base it, you don't do a rebasing and then you base the projections. But from what you're high. saying, if we are expecting a drop in tax to GDP ratio before it goes up, then Mr. Foriata would be right that it would go up after the, it has come down to about 13. Work. After when we did a rebasing, it so, went so, up. So but his I'm target is attainable of 20? Um, well, 20 is ambitious. Mm -hmm. I must say, because if you have, if you have to increase tax to GDP ratio by even two percentage points of GDP, sometimes it takes five years. Mm. And I'm talking, yes, I'm talking, I'm not just unique to Ghana. You know, because, you know, you have a traditional sector that is paying the tax. You are now going to look at a new sector. And mm. GRA is now going to do surveys, it's going to send auditors, it's going to do compliance, you know, rope them into registration and whatever. For example, you are going to see, you know, who are the, you know, oil services companies that have come, you know, into the country. Okay. You know, where are they located? You know, do we have a, so you use sometimes direct and indirect means the transactions they are doing, let's say, with, you know, other companies that are already to beef mm. up, you know, the registration, you mm. know, go after them. Mm. We are not saying they are not necessarily paying, mm. but are they paying, the, you know, so it takes time. Why do you think <coughs> the GRA has found it difficult to reach their revenue target? Um, this year, for instance, I, I just interviewed an official of the GRA at the beginning of October. He told us that with three months to go, we have 15 billion Ghana cities short of hitting uh, the targets of revenue they want to raise? Well, there isn't one, you know, one answer, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, we, we, as a tax administrator, I know that Ghana, you know, should do more. Mm. And particularly Ghana as a middle income country, like Kenya as a middle income country, and all these countries should aim to go beyond the 20%. So the minister is right in that regard. Okay. But do you leapfrog? Do you put structures in place? Remember, we did reforms that created GRA headquarters. We integrated VAT and, in and income tax. Why? Because it's the same invoice. The okay. invoice that you use to calculate your income tax is the same one. So when you have different businesses can, you know, sometimes, yes, you know, or you, you spend a lot of costs going to audit the same invoice, whereas you could just do one. And then we split the offices into large, medium, and small taxpayer office because your medium and large taxpayer offices that are paying, you know, VAT and income tax, the small ones are normally are not registered. Okay. But of course, we have the flat rate scheme and all that. Okay. So you have to put on, so it is that administration refining that administration structure that was put in place. There were new tax laws and everything. Okay. And that is the mundane part of the job. Mm. It is not like tax policy. It's not as we, what, I, what I mean is that you can by fiat say we are increasing VAT by 2% or communication service but what tax. you're saying is it's the processes that you put to implement it. That is what will make it effective. Yes, and, and the difference okay. I'm trying to strike mm. is that if I increase by 2%, I'm increasing by 2% on those who are paying the tax already. Okay. If I have to expand the base and go deeper, then I have to kick in my administration mm. and compliance, and that is where GRA has a, a okay. bigger responsibility to um, 